You haven't yet. We have a wonderful episode lined up. Frank's excited about war, I think. I don't know. Bobby is somewhere here, but he's also not Wait, here. So- Pat, say the magic word. Say the magic word. Cock? No, it's abracadabra, man. Oh, ab- the other Boom. Word. Now you oh. see. Oh. Like wow. magic. Well, Take like it, Frank. Like magic, Frank, do it. Welcome to the POS show with your co host Bobby, Invisible Tamboro, and Pat Oates. <laughs> Nice guests are comedian Dan Brown hey. and a magician by the name of Adam Parisi. Welcome, guys. Take it away, Pat. Frank, it wouldn't be Bobby the Invisible Tamburo. It'd be like the Invisible Bobby Tamburo. You don't do it in the middle. He's not <laughs> well, the Invisible. No, no, no. As, as an ex-Marine, we learn to put words in the middle of another word. Like the thing that I grew up with at Paris Silo was out fucking standing. We took outstanding and we increased it by putting fucking in the middle of it. Right. And like things like you, who's that guy? That's Johnny, the Puerto Rican from Michigan, Sanchez. Like, I know, I know what you guys did, but that's Johnny, not what we're doing here. This is entertainment, not war. I know you wanted to be more. Don't shame Johnny PR. Okay. <laughs> Just I'm don't shaming. Do that. He's good you at You applied, PR. you applied fight principles to comedy nickname. Right. right, like that's how fighters do it. It would be like Pat Golden Gloves Oats, Dan steals Bobby's job Brown. You know what I mean? Like that's how they do <laughs> boxing. Whereas like comedians, it comes afterwards. Yeah, well, I, I mix it up. Like the amazing Jonathan, who's now just regular Jonathan because he's dead. But like <laughs> for a while, and I also I I said a, people were putting that up, so I put a picture up on I think it was Instagram of um. The guy Jonathan from Queer Eye, and I said AIDS, amazing Jonathan, and it should have got more love. I was very proud of myself, but I didn't get. Was that a sad day for you, Adam, when Amazing Jonathan is dead? Uh, I thought uh, he died already. I'm not trying to be. Yeah, a dick. I really was, did. Yeah, he was. He was not doing well for a while, so right. it wasn't. It wasn't a surprise. I mean, if you watch the documentary, everybody knew he was like a, you know, like smoking, you know, speed and doing crazy drugs and yeah but i thought that just a magic trick that he was gonna come back yeah yeah no 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 not doing well but uh, uh yeah it's sad because he i mean i for a generation of us he was like he was comedy magic like you had you had on one end of the spectrum you're like you have real mat you know i don't say real magic i want to say like um guys you know guys doing like um you know just magic right and then comedy magicians and amazing jonathan was the you know, was the height of that. Wow. I have to admit something. He must have been some illusionist because I never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Frank? He was very well done. He was touring all over. He was headlining comedy clubs, one of the few magicians to do that. Wow. Mm-hmm. He the guy who set Jay Leno's set on fire? I don't know. Is he? I think uh, so. He was like, watch probably- this, abracadabra. And then he just set like the, the freaking couch on no, fire. That was David oh, right. Duke. I remember that episode. Oh, that was that was Jonathan. That was I Jonathan thought- Winters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comic in Connecticut named Dr. Jay Sute, and he passed away a couple years ago. And yeah. he yeah. loved Amazing Jonathan and used to bother the funny bone all the time. So he can open for him. So now I'm happy to think that Dr. J is now bothering Amazing Jonathan to open for him in heaven. Like I think that he gets there and he's like, "Worry about that, Pat." Oh yeah, you're right. Because magicians go to hell, and so do pediatricians. So they're both in hell. (laughs) Now, Bobby, I don't know if I should address the elephant in the room because I don't want our guests to feel like something's wrong. Or should we just get to it? Do you want to do it, or should I do it? I, I'm not even sure what you're referring to. Adam, I don't know if you noticed when you were talking to us lovingly about your memories of Amazing Jonathan. I was listening. Frank was as alert as he can be. Dan even looked up. There was a lot going on. And then Dan Bobby, only looks up when you say his name. Literally, watch. <laughs> he is looking down until you say Dan. But he heard, he, he heard I was, I was Googling the Amazing Jonathan to see if he was the guy that set the Tonight Show on fire. <laughs> You could do that at any other time. You're kind of on the show. Anyway, so, but one person who was rolling their eyes and feeling uncomfortable. That sounds like confrontation, more confrontational. Than I'm just think. seeing it, saying how I saw it. Um, Bobby has an issue with comedic magicians, not comedians, not magicians, 
comedic magicians because one kind of fucked up his life a little bit. So I think he thinks you're all the same. Kind of like when you're younger and white and a black guy steals something, you're just racist now. That's kind of where Bobby is, I think. So I was thinking it was good to have you on, someone who I think is funny and a great guy and could try to like, for your people, make Bobby like your people again. So, well, okay. So the bad news is that 90% of comedy magicians suck ass. So see Bobby, I told you he would agree with that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Comedy magicians are somebody who can't do either one very well. And they combine the both of them right out of my set. (laughs) <laughs> to try to he says create, that in his act <laughs> yeah it, it's it's like it, you're neither good at comedy nor good at magic and you think by combining the two of them you'll be good at one of them so but uh i like well, to say it why not half-ass them both that's, that's yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's really bad it's bad it's the the issue with it is that as a so as a comic i have i have more respect for comedians um uh, than I do most magicians because most to do comedy, you uh, to call yourself a comic, you have to get up on stage and you have to work your craft, right? You, you're you're hitting open mics, you're going to shows, you have to put in work, you're doing all this stuff. To be a magician, all you have to all you have to do is like buy a trick and say that I am a magician, right? So you're you're not really a magician, you're not a performer, you're not you know, so you're a hobbyist that's doing it but you can still call yourself a magician. You can even be at the Knights of Columbus show and doing a, you know, you could be doing kids magic shows. You could be doing stuff and you can even get on real shows, you, you know, because you're doing comedy magic. But as a comic, you have no props. You have nothing to fall back on. You don't have, so comedy magicians fall back on the magic part, right? So the, the, the comedy is all stock lines. It's all hack jokes. It's all, you know, uh, put out your hand, know the clean one, you know, uh, it, it's all garbage. <laughs> you know, the and, clean one. I like that. Oh, I would do it. With, I would do it with testicles. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's all stock lines. Uh, and then it's, um, then they have the magic and the magic can be good. It's because it's not there. Somebody else created it and used it for, for hundreds and hundreds of shows and then sold it to make some money. And then magicians pick it up and use it. And so they can fall back on that, the surprise factor, right? And so they, they know that they have this surprise factor coming at the end, which could get the oohs and ahs. And people could leave the show going, that was kind of fun because the only thing that they remember, they will even laugh at the hack jokes. They'll laugh at the stock lines and then they'll leave going, oh, that guy was really good. But if you go to see a comic, comic doesn't have that, right? He, all, he or she, all they have is their words. They have their jokes. Right, and but they- a hack comic is everything you just said, but without the magic. And yes. that's weird that we don't. I actually now respect comedic magicians more than hack comic. I didn't think <laughs> about it, but at least they're like, I know this joke is stolen, but here's a dove. You know what I mean? It's like, I like kind of like that. The difference, and- I've, I, I've never been, I've never seen a comic in front of other comics do somebody else's material, not get called out on it. Oh, I have, because there's a lot of oh, spineless people. Not, yeah, not get called and out then I, I, I've called them out myself. I've watched yeah. everyone else not say shit because I'm a loud fuck. But yeah, I've seen it. Bobby, I've, you're gonna I've, say something? I was just gonna say he hasn't seen Dan's act then. Oh, <laughs> he has seen Dan's act. How dare you? I Dan have. is magical. Dan should be the amazing Dan Brown. Yeah, I'm gonna Dan, say yeah, some Dan should be a comedian. magician. That so, would be a good comment. So I'm I'm interested. Why is the roadie from Leonard Skinner picking on me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 <laughs> hear Bobby's story about why uh, uh how a comedy magician uh ruined his life or messed with his right day. before you do that Dan can you remember the name of the magician that would go to Joker's open mic what was it the G something Gene oh I I remember seeing him there but I don't Fuck. remember like he wasn't it wasn't like the amazing was. it was like uh like the interesting Gene it wasn't even like good <laughs> the title was it was like mediocre gene and it was uh, <laughs> the noteworthy gene <laughs> okay bobby share um no it, what you said makes a lot of sense adam like especially the fact that like being a comedic magician would give you more opportunity so if there were two people trying to support or like win over the love of one woman the comedian would have to go to new york to pursue his dream whereas the comedic magician could like 
do birthday parties in the area and he'd probably already be there scouting the next kid to molest. I get what the point you're making. <laughs> like I'm understanding. But that, that kid was yeah. never there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, where's my finger? It's in your butthole. Yeah. That whole shit. Frank, when you, Frank, when you <laughs> so, were alive so as a child, was there magic back then? Uh, living. That Living. was magic. I mean, yeah, just survive. <laughs> yeah. No, but Adam, I do have a question. Okay. I was at a, uh, we had a, at my club, we had a comic magician there. And he was uh, fairly known, I guess. I'm not aware of all these people. But That's a weird um, way to he had, on a registry, but go on, Frank. He, he was in his 60s. <laughs> he might have been Spanish. I'm not sure. But but he was really good and he had some decent jokes. What is but this? How did he get racist? And he did he got, did some incredible things. One thing he did, when I came in, he was already working the tables. So I sat down. He never came to He was show. just the bus boy at a country club. And Frank <laughs> thinks he was that magical because he pulled the tablecloth off. He's like, this Puerto Rican was doing all these tricks. He cleaned the silva. He parked my car. It was amazing. Now, what he did, <laughs> he pointed me out from the stage and he said, what do you have under your watch? unclipped my watch and there was a silver dollar there i have no clue how he got there he wasn't near me at all and i I looked at the people so around old. me they're all friends of mine was it my silver dollar that i forgot that i put there <laughs> <laughs> are you asking adam if you forgot the put? like you can ask how the trick works but you can't ask him if you forgot you put money on your wrist <laughs> This is this is true. So back then, Frank, you remember you used to keep a silver dollar under your watch. So in case you lost all of your money, you at least had that dollar for a hot dog. So, yeah. That, OK, so without it. telling us how to do that trick, how would he get that under his wristwatch if he never went near him? Well, so you're probably so the human brain is it really sucks at remembering things. And magicians so. take advantage of this. Yeah, like uh, I have a boyfriend. It really sucks at remembering. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's uh, using 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 psychology. You can convince somebody um, that something happened that didn't right. So a, a trick could be even better than it was. So the magician probably did come near you, but through time misdirection, you you forgot about that. You yeah. you 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 take that part out of the equation. Like when people forget they were molested. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, Dan. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just remembering now that you brought I'm it sorry. up. Oh you know, no, dude. By the way, dude, pull down your pants. There's a silver dollar in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now, could they do the opposite of that, where instead of making you forget something, could they make you remember something that didn't happen? What? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You, uh, you can do yes, it. you can do that. You can have. You can mess with somebody's memory. So, in an instance, uh, so I'll use words like this. Um, let's say I take a deck of cards, and uh, the deck is in a special order, and I can't have you shuffle the deck, but I can shuffle the deck that doesn't disturb the order. What I'll do is I'll shuffle the deck a bunch of times and then I'll hand the deck to you and I say, can you cut the deck? Now, cutting doesn't change that order. It just it just reconstitutes it where, it where it is. Yeah. Where the starting point is. Right. So you can do that. You cut a couple of times and he cuts Then I take it back and I shuffle one more time and I put it down. And then later on in the trick, I will say something to you. I'll say, Bobby, remember, remember, we shuffled the deck and we cut the deck. And you say yes, because we did as a group shuffle the deck and we as a group cut the deck. But then you later are going to remember that as, yes, we shuffled the deck. I shuffled the deck. Well, you never did. I did. But oh I gosh. lead you down that path through verbal, you know, misrememberings. I let you fill in that. I don't say, remember, you shuffled the deck because you'll call me out on that. You'll say, no. Your brain will say, no, no, no. We never shuffled the deck. I, did, I didn't shuffle. But that, that phrase, we shuffled the deck. I've had that conversation in relationships most of my life. I'm like, <laughs> remember, I swear remember, to God, remember, that didn't happen. It happened, remember, Pat. Pat. Remember it happened? Like, it didn't happen. Well, You're talking what, about marriage. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had that for a while. Pat, remember, Pat, we agreed that we would see other people? Remember <laughs> oh, how we said yeah. that? <laughs> Remember we said we would share the bed with other people? Like, I didn't know. <laughs> so, Bobby, is this making sense to you? This yeah, guy? Yeah, it sounds like 
Did it sounds trick. like this fucking wiggle fingers over there <laughs> fucking manipulated this girl who already had mental health issues. Let's be honest. She was seeing me and made her fucking think things were happening that weren't. So now, I'm magi- so I'm guessing so I'm guessing I'm, so uh, some type of magician uh, slept with your girl or stole a girl that you were dating. Yeah, yeah, something along those lines. That's a very wow, great that- job, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you were able to get into his mind just like and that. Figure that out. That's fucking amazing. Right just asshole. like that. Just like <laughs> just like I can guess that Frank at le- least gets up six times a night to pee. He doesn't get up. <laughs> we change the sheets every morning. <laughs> you don't have to get closer are, to do those that. Are rubber do that. Those are rubber sheets. <laughs> or were they? Uh, Frank, Frank, I'm going to check under my sheets to see if I got 50 silver dollars so I can just get right. all the Jewish women I want. <laughs> I still don't know it. I mean, I'm going to get dollars. the silver dollar. <laughs> Yeah. Next time I see Frank, I like how magicians just have to have a silver they dollar. They have to have a silver dollar on them. Do you yes. have a grapefruit on you? Oh, I have a lime. Uh, would a that lime. Cool, that too? <laughs> That's for scurvy. Yeah. Dan, have you ever tried to do magic? You've done ma- you've done music. You've done illustration. You've done comedy. Have you ever, you write? Have you ever done magic? Um, no, I, I have not. Would you um, ever try it? Uh, <laughs> no. why i i just i don't know like i feel like uh i it, i'm not i don't feel like I'm, i like making things i don't i don't know if i i, I don't know i just i, I don't I, i'm they not make curious th- some of them it. make tricks i know a lot of them just learn other old tricks but a lot of them make their own tricks and then when you make one right you have to actually register it and call it your own and all that shit right is it Leviticus yeah. 1931 for you, where it says, do not turn to mediums or necromancers, do not seek them out, or so make yourselves unclean by them? Yes. I, uh, <laughs> you could, you could, lots of, you lots just of read fun, my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> lots of fun Bible quotes. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, magicians, the fun thing about, the weird thing about magicians is that they can't uh, copyright or patent any of their tricks. So huh. because, well, they can, but the problem with that is the minute that you copyright or patent a trick, you have to explain exactly how it's done and it's in public knowledge so that people, other people who are creating the trick or creating the thing that you patented can look at it and say, am I infringing upon your patent? Am I too close to your original idea or is it my own? So the minute that everybody knows how you do the trick, it's over. So the guy who invented the song, The Woman in Half Illusion, actually tried to get a patent for it. And when they wouldn't allow him to basically you know, keep the secret, he, he couldn't do it. By the time he got over to the United States, the guy who invented it was from England. By the time he got here, some other dude had seen him in England, figured out how he did it, recreated the trick and toured the entire United States with it and was more pop, more famous than that guy ever was. Now, did he steal Step that one. guy's woman? Yeah, did he? Step one, <laughs> gather materials. Twins, coffin, someone else's girlfriend. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do magic because I, you, you have to get the crowd to like, really buy into something and i'm too much of a fucking sarcastic asshole i, I mean i believe me i've seen you spinato's great with his humor i mean to me he's hilarious and a good magician and a hypnotist it's incredible what that guy can do he's, he's an entertainer but i would go even farther than him to the point where people are like we don't even want to see your magic you know but, I mean? you're just an asshole but you wouldn't put him in the categories of like prior or houdini jim spinato yeah, I, and I, I only Adam knows it. And Frank, when I seen him before, and I'm not trying to like boast about. I love the guy. If he focused on one thing, right, he'd be <laughs> great at that one thing. Like he, but he's just but as good at all this stuff. Feel like maybe, maybe as a hypnotist, he might be one of the best there is. To focus yeah. at one thing, and in, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like it's playing CYO basketball. You can be the best at CYO, but there's still like you know public. School. As a hypnotist, and Adam is that he's one of the best. I mean. He's awesome. And he also is a filthy asshole when he does it, which is tremendous. So it's like, yeah. so I like that. He's a creepy guy. Yeah. Jim, Jim is, Jim's great. Uh, he's, he's fantastic. He, you know, he, he started out as a you know magician. 
doing and then you know like you said did hypnotism i think for you know he's done i don't think he ever did straight up just stand-up comedy i think he's just naturally no. funny and he learned he, he watches it a lot but he's not a guy who just went up and did stand up yeah i don't think i i, I don't like think the he dude has... from entourage i never saw entourage jeremy what's his name piven jeremy, jeremy piven. piven yeah he's not like a comedian but he's naturally funny is he funny yeah. i heard he's terrible you got the joke pat Thanks. oh okay sorry <laughs> I thought you were being serious for a second. I'm like, Jerry Piven's good? I, I am not going to be serious this whole podcast. And Adam, just so you know, I think you're a lovely person. I'm going to keep joking the whole time, but I think you're great. Oh, you don't know me, so. That's right. He was joking again right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Frank, oh, real quick. There... Frank, Frank, yeah. th- did you ever see a magician when you were a kid? Because I'm sure it was a different type of magic. I mean, be serious. Like, there wasn't much entertainment when you were a child. There wasn't 8,000 TV channels. I mean, there was, but I'm sure you went to more magic shows than any of us fucking went to. Ooh, look at this woman vote. <laughs> Pat, it's a lot of bad. Look at this black guy eat near us. (laughs) Oh, he can buy his own property in the south. Oh my god, what a magic trick! How do you make that water fountain work? (laughs) It's not for him. We make Kennedy's head disappear. (laughs) Yeah, I was about eight years old, and uh, supposedly a magician asked me if I wanted to see his lollipop. Stop it, (laughs) that explains so much. So, did you show him yours instead? No, no, I don't want to get into it. You already opened it. You opened Pandora's well, box. I'm, I'm closing it. I mean, yeah, you, does it make you feel no, better? You brought it up. I, I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. You could have just said no. I didn't I, see uh, any uh, magic. Adam, Dan, I, does- I like I like magicians. I've hired a lot for my club to do shows over the years. Like that Puerto um, Rican guy. <laughs> that I was one, but there's many that I no that Juan. I no, was so Juan. Adam, Adam, so you know. <laughs> Magician is the slur Frank uses for black people. Yes. Oh, like, boy, there are a lot of magicians in here because things are going to disappear, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. My wife banged another magician last night. <laughs> that's why he was so on board earlier. He was like, oh, that's a tale as old as time, Bobby. I've been there. <laughs> Dan, does it make you feel better to know that they're still using the let me show you my, molly, my lollipop trick all these years later? I mean, it's relatable. I like, guess. Did you Freudian slip and tell Danny has a mullet? <laughs> I did Freudian slip, but it wasn't about a mullet. Don't worry. <laughs> you said mullet. Like you said, you said a you run that back. You'll you'll definitely hear the word I said, but it wasn't mullet. Oh, that's it's not, not a mullet. He's, it doesn't have a mullet. No, I'm Dan is beautiful. Got long hair. hair. I'm not saying it's a mullet. I'm the one here who likes Bobby Dan. Did. Bobby yeah. said it's a mullet. I, know, I did it. I, I said have... that Bobby said that. Yeah, I right. think Dan looks like great if he's trying to play Hermione in the first episode of Harry Potter. I'm just ch- mad because I'm tall and I don't have to wear Oshkosh Bigosh. <laughs> this is a drug rug, Dan, because I'm cooler than you and I'm not going to apologize for I've it. I've never drug tried to be rug. cool. A drug rug. Tell. Stop it. <laughs> Frank, That's it's going to be cool. you and me against the world, buddy. We're going to have to circle the fucking wagons here. <laughs> All right, well, here's what I'm going to do. Frank, I know you have a story prepared at one point. Yeah, it's a small story. All right, I heard you. Okay. What I'm going to ask also is for you to do something else. What? In this time of war, Frank, <laughs> quickly within like a minute or two in a Frank way, explain the war and, who, and we'll guess who's the piece of shit in this war. You know, that's a good question. Okay, you lead up, up to what I wanted to talk about. Okay? Between, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. You, you, no, you're reading almost. my mind. I find that you're, you're a magician. <laughs> you're a magician. Now tell a joke. Follow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, I just did it. <laughs> I'll bang my girlfriend. Oh, you're in. <laughs> That's what we call a bang bang. Magic. All right. So, my first wife was born in Russia. Okay? And I haven't spoken to her in six years. Six years ago, she called me up and she says, My sister is dying in Manhattan. And we put her in an assisted living home. Now, my, my ex-wife lives down south, and she says, could you go to her apartment in Manhattan and clean it out? I said, what? <laughs> go to her apartment and clean it out? She says, well, I, I said, I don't know if I could do that. She says, well, just get the valuables, and I'll come up next, next summer, and I'll pick it up. I said, okay. So I go there. All the valuables were stolen. I mean, they were all stolen. So I call her up, and she says, 
well, what's there? I said, a lot of photographs framed, uh, a lot of knickknacks and everything. Could you bring that to Connecticut and I'll come and pick it up next year? Well, I did. It was four lawn bags. <laughs> four years later, it's still sitting in storage. So I don't even call her up. I, I know where she lives. I put everything <laughs> is in the lawn bags. I bring it to FedEx. $400 later, they wrapped everything up and they shipped it to her house. <laughs> And she sends me a text. That was so sweet of you. That was it. So now, six years later, war happens. The war. Right. And I said, Jesus, that's where the, the, my ex-wife's from. So I call her up. You know, very pleasant. We're having this conversation. And I said, how do you feel about Russia invading what Ukraine? Was Ukraine, it's behind you. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine is backwards. <laughs> Ukraine. It's and so backwards. she says, she says, well, I'm going to tell you something. I did not live in Ukraine. I lived in, in Russia. And I said, well, wait a second. The, the town that you lived in is in Ukraine. He says, when I lived there, it was Russia. It is now Ukraine. Right. They, they flip-flop a bunch. Yeah. And, and she says, I'm totally against it. I said, well, do you know exactly what happened? So I try to explain it. We get into this fucking fight, an argument on the phone about who's right. And I, I don't have that much information. I mean, she was born there, but she was instilled with this Russian purity because Ukraine did not exist when she was living there. So we got into an argument and we hung up. Now, who's the piece of shit in the story? What? This is not about the war. It's about your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife. Ex-wife. Well, I mean, this is firsthand information. She right. lived there. All right. Were you, when you guys were married, were you Putin in her ass? <laughs> <laughs> That's my Putin joke. It was. I'll tell, I'll tell you something. I mean, Ooh. the best quality she had was when we got divorced, when we tried to get a divorce, we argued for two years about alimony. We went through all kinds of lawyers. We finally got one lawyer that arbitrated it. And so we fought for two years and she finally is getting money. A year later, I get engaged to get married. Hold on, yes, Bobby. What did you mean by the phrase Russian purity? I don't know either. I was going to ask that, but I'm happy you guys. <laughs> Literally from this Olympics, where they had a 15-year-old test positive for doping, right. like as far back in history as the czars, like tricking people with biological weapons of the time, I can't think of a good thing the Russians did. Yeah, Ivan Drago, he was doing steroids. <clears throat> What's the purity? They even like... They like kind of cheat at everything, and if not, they super right. enhance everyone. There's no I mean, purity. We know who they are. We know who they are. So that's not purity. That's I didn't purity. say purity. You said Russian purity. In what context? You said it <laughs> like two minutes ago. You talked about your ex-wife and said she's full of Russian purity. No shit, I said that. Yep. Wow. Adam, make him remember I, this. I, I don't remember. <laughs> what kind of fucking... Adam, Adam let, me, let, let me remember what I said. Adam. Frank, ask us quickly who the piece of shit is so we can all say it's you and move on. Who's the piece of shit? No, Frank, you ask us. Give us examples of your story. Adam, who's the piece of shit? No, you have, to ask, you have to give us examples. You know how the show works. You give us examples. All right, my... my is my it you? Wife? My ex-wife, me, okay. Your ex-wife. Me, me, me for trying to defend what Russia did was wrong and her trying to accept the fact that Russian is, the, is pure. They didn't do anything wrong. The Russians didn't do anything wrong at what point in history? Well, well I'm talking Bobby, about- Bobby, you go first. Said. Bobby, you go first because I enjoy this. Bobby, go first. <laughs> Let me go last because I'm actually on Frank's side here. Okay, well, who said I wasn't? Good. But all right, Dan, you go first, buddy. Are we talk? Are we saying who's the piece of shit in the Russian Ukraine thing, or the no, Frank in and Frank's his... story? No, 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 no. In, in my story, uh, but you can go with Russia Ukraine if you want. I guess the lady who didn't pick up her shit is the piece of shit. <laughs> there yeah. you go. There you go. That's Fucking it. Four hundred dollars, of course, we just said. Russian purist. 
Uh, Adam, <laughs> Adam, who's the piece of shit? Yeah, I got I, I to gotta side with uh, Dan and uh, Frank on that one. She didn't pick up her stuff. Four years? That's ridiculous. And it wasn't just $400. It was the money you spent on storing it, too. Yeah. She should send you some Russian ruples or something. No, but when you're a Russian, you just get storage. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> they always have, like, containers. So that's just they free. Have, that's part they of have it. Track suits and track suits and they call everybody bro. That's yeah. it. And they love, they love blue jeans. <laughs> Bobby, go ahead. So the best I got, Frank, is it was raining hard in Frisco. And you needed another fair to make your night and you picked her up and then you remembered about how much you loved her back in the day and you dropped her off at her place and you were going to be a pilot and she was going to be an actress and she was acting happy in her home and you were getting stoned and driving your taxi. And then like five years later, you got into town a little early, had a few hours to kill before your show. So you took a taxi to see her, but she didn't live there anymore. And the butler gave her a new place and she was happy now. And you made love, but she still wouldn't stay with you. It's the piece of shit husband who took her away from you, Frank. You're not the piece of shit. It's him. Thank you. Thank Frank, you. it's you. Frank, it's 100% you. You're a <laughs> fucking creep. Did you listen to parts of that story? This is your ex-wife. And every you guys all let this go. And I don't know why you did. It was a nice enough story. But Frank's like, so, the, so we're fighting over money and alimony and all that. Okay, Frank's battling a woman in the 50s when they just give him money. They can't even work. She came over from another land, and Frank won't give her six bucks. Okay? And then on top of that, at one point, Frank's like, we didn't speak for four years. I didn't need to call her. I know where she fucking lives. That is so fucking creepy. It's insane. You should I don't know where any of my exes live. But you're, 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 you're no four years later and you dropped off all this shit and wanted to be called a hero. Frank, she wanted no memories of you. She was trying to get away. The war happens and you call this woman and go, how's your family? Are they dead? Which side are you on? <laughs> She's fucking this is terrifying. You're like, give me your scoop because I used to fuck you. You're an awful man. <laughs> awful, awful man. She you know, said, I heard you flying high <laughs> on my radio. You said, it's not all it seems. Pat, you made me feel like so low. Yeah, you and her used to do <laughs> cocaine together, and you used to call that cocaine. Why. I'm going to tell you why you made me feel low. Let me finish my joke, and then you can do it. You and her used to do cocaine together, and that cocaine's name? Russian Purity. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, I mean, I've been... I buried this deep inside of me. I didn't want to say it. Yeah, but you did. <laughs> no. Well, well, I told you, we, we fought for two years about alimony. You finally get yeah. the alimony. She's like, please, I, like, can I have a dollar? One dollar. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I tell her I'm getting married. She says, I would like to meet you for lunch. And so she picks out the Oak Room at the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan. So we meet there. And she says, and this is the truth. She says, I don't want you to support two wives. So the day you get married, you don't have to pay me alimony. This is the woman that fought so hard to get every nickel she could get out of me. Stops it. So guess what? 49 years later, I haven't paid her a dime and she never got married. Did right. you make love to her? No. no. Which one of you started to cry? <laughs> I, I, I'm crying now because of the money that I saved, not giving it. Why to wouldn't she take the money that you left? I don't know. I have no clue. All, all I know, at the time, she was going out with Benny Hanna, you know, the uh, restaurant chain. I don't know, Frank. We're, waiting, we're waiting for Frank to drop some stupid ass name nobody cares about. Yeah, there I it mean, is. She was. <clears throat> she was going out with this guy. I mean, he was producing Broadway shows at the time. I she heard that she him. was she was the inspiration for that thing they use at Benny Hanna restaurants, that little guy that pees on your stuff. <laughs> she used to love to be peed on by people. So I heard she was that inspiration. <laughs> She was living the highlight at that time. High life at that time. Yeah, the, the, off the seven dollars alimony you gave her. Sometimes she was killing it yeah, I'm, I'm, as I'm a Russian to, whore in the streets I, with her purity. It was a lot of money. I don't remember what it was though. Yeah, you do. You remember all that stuff. Was no, she finally happy now because she finally liked herself? No, no, she was. She was. So Frank brought up her family dying in a war. <laughs> no, she. I mean, she's extremely happy. She lives uh, in Tennessee. And um, what happened was she a was, sitcom waiting to happen. She's an old yeah, Russian she, lady in Tennessee. No, no, she, does, she doesn't work. 
She has a son that she's. Who's the father? Uh, oh. uh, some Russian guy. Yeah, you were Russian yeah. to come in her. Yeah, you were. <laughs> no, no, some Russian guy. She never got married. And this kid became, you know, is a good kid. And oh God, I thought you were going to say Barishnikov happy. or something. She's happy. Did, when you see her, when you saw her, did she say, uh, we've gotten too damn good at leaving, Frank? And you said, Sue, you're right. No, I, I like I, to think there's one I, Harry Chapin fan who listens to this podcast who's thoroughly going to enjoy I think it's just all me. those questions. I think I I'm the asked. only one getting the Harry Chapin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, I think this is for me. We went fucking B-sides. Yep. <laughs> I, mean, I, I haven't seen her in 40 years, so I have no idea what she looks like. And I mean, for any of you young kids listening to the podcast, check out Taxi Followed by Sequel if you want to know heartbreak and pain. How old is she, Frank? How old is she? Uh, I'm 80, so right. she's got to be set. I met, I married her. Old when enough she... that she could have been Sue from the original Taxi song. That's yes. old. Matt. We waited until she was 18 when we got married. Uh, so Ew. She... Oh, my God. Everything you say is creepy. You waited. Well, yeah. Oh, How old were you? Motherfucker. How old was I? 43. No. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> this was two years ago. <laughs> no, um... I think I was 22 and she was 18. So it makes it 75. So you, 76, flew, so you flew in a child to marry. No, she was here. Oh, okay. She was here. You know, a family moved here. A great story for another time. You've but, told it. With the, oh, I told it? With, no, with the, uh, the thunderbolts coming down, the lightning, and then she was being traveled here. Right? Or is that a different story? You've... <laughs> A different story. It's another. Person. You don't talk about the lightning bolts and the rape, or is no. that a Canadian lady? No, I don't remember. Does anybody remember that story? Bobby, when you remember that one? I remember the story a little bit vaguely. Yeah. When did you guys start learning about love in the backseat of a Dodge? No, it was a um, Doge Chevy, fifty-seven Chevy, baby. <laughs> He's quoting songs. Can anyone else catch on? Um, Frank, no. you're the only one old enough here happening. that you should know the songs I'm quoting. Like, it's impressive Pat knows it. I do not blame Adam for looking lost. It is neither his genre nor his age range. And Dan only knows four things, and three of them are Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> Start quoting some Led Zeppelin. And I was yeah. like, it's not, not K-pop or Zeppelin. It's not Dan. Hey, I don't listen to K-pop. I, I was trying to say you were cool, Dan. I was trying to give you credit for once. Oh, man. Dan, your green screen moved a little bit. Yeah. No, we can you see, see your my house. My curtainless windows. Just a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> I, I, I hear you don't that. under like if you could see my setup of how this green screen is hanging. Like there's a coat hanger attached to like a, an overhead <laughs> light over on this side, and it just doesn't reach all the way, so it's diagonal. I'll have, maybe if I do this. Well, Honestly, I just feel like you put so much effort into your backgrounds all the time. Like you are one of the few people who I feel like creates a backgrounds. <laughs> That's all those old cartoons. So. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure you got your crop credit. credit go. All kidding aside, I know we have fun here, but I'm your biggest fan, Dan. Next to Yay. Pat. But also, what he's not telling you is that coat hanger that's holding it up because the town I know what town he lives in is attached to a Puerto Rican woman having an abortion right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. <laughs> yeah, that joke. <laughs> Good for you. That's, the first one I got. That's the first joke I got in the last 15 minutes. I, we appreciate it. You <laughs> told two of them. Um, <laughs> Bobby, do you have any stories or are we going right to me? Well, I do have a TV show, but let's do one of your stories and then we'll do my. You don't think TV we should do a TV show, show right after the whatever the fuck Frank just did? Uh, no, no. Okay. I think we should do a story and then we'll get back on track. Perfect. Teacher suspended after her sex tape is airdropped to 200 students. An Ohio teacher was suspended after her alleged sex tape was airdropped to all the students at her high school. The raunchy footage involving the educator and her boyfriend was stored on her phone and somehow it got airdropped. Now, she did not airdrop it and supposedly no one grabbed her phone. But the police report is saying that it was just it was just dropped and everyone in the school, every fucking kid saw this intense sex act. On there, um, so the got, unidentified teacher uh, involved all of a sudden, in the YouTube album popped up and the sex album, yes, at the same time, is <laughs> <laughs> not currently considered a suspect. But Cleveland Police Sex Crimes Unit are investigating. Um, however, the uh, high school district spokesman Thomas Ott said the uh, intimately exposed educator has been removed from the school 
It will not work with students pending the outcome of the probe. Now, she wasn't having sex with her student in this thing. It was with her boyfriend. It was another adult. It, it shit happens, but she's been removed from her job. The teacher reportedly admitted she had the X-ray video on her phone, but said she did not airdrop it to anyone. Um, a cybersecurity expert told the local news it's very easy for that things to get hacked in that nature. If it can get close enough to their phone, they definitely can pull it up. Um, I, in the middle of the story, I didn't mean to do that, but Bobby put his hand up and then a card popped up in Adam's screen and it looked like Bobby handed Adam a card and it was crazy. Anyway, um, <laughs> if anyone, I just, I just noticed that when I was reading, but if anyone watches that, yeah, it was some serious magic right there. Um, if somebody were to come across the phone, they'd be able to hack it and put the thing in there. It's fine. As a parent, it's appalling, said disgruntled dad Ken Trump. It makes you feel like you have a punch in the gut, especially when you're an authority figure and you're a role model around children. He added, it shouldn't matter how the video is shared. It shouldn't have been there and accessible to kids for anyone there. So, and, but the union is saying, hey, we got to talk with her first. We got to figure out what happened before we completely get rid of her. We got it. That's how we handle things. Who is the piece of shit in this story? Is it this teacher for having this on her phone? Okay, I get it. She's a teacher, but she's a human being. I mean, you know how many other of those teachers have dick pics on their phones and things like that? Some stupid thing happened. Yeah, it's insane that it happened. More than likely a student did it because that's, I mean, how would they know it's on there? Maybe she did it by mistake. Who would know what the, maybe she tried to share it to another fucking teacher. Whatever it was, yes, you're supposed to be professional, but shit happens. You're a human being and you're a human being who's paid poorly and kind of, glorified in a job that isn't that hard to get is it the father right there for getting so upset and saying it's like a punch to the gut oh my yeah, god dude but, investigate that dude's kid because he definitely yeah. hacked her fucking phone right <laughs> yeah I, like i i almost was gonna say that it feels like that, that he's the one there if not that guy wants to fuck that lady like he's all upset punch in the gut your kid got this now it depends if it's a boy or a girl i guess i know in this day and age i shouldn't say that but i should say is what they like to date. If his child likes to date women, he should be like, dude, share it. That's awesome. We all got this video now. And that's great. Is it the boyfriend? You know what I mean? For I, We don't hear him in this thing. I'd be going, yeah, that's my dick. What do you think, kids? That shit was awesome. Look at me fucking, because that's cool as hell. I'm fucking your teacher, and I'll fucking beat you up if you talk to your... I'd be beating up Ken Trump and everybody. How dare you? That's your girlfriend. Is it the union for defending this person and saying, hey, don't fire him? Or is it the school board for saying, remove right away? Because we've seen worse shit happen. We've seen teachers fuck actual students and then stay there for a couple of months and then get removed. She didn't have sex with anybody. It was a simple, honest mistake. If they found porn on a kid's phone, they would have confiscated the phone and probably suspended the kid, but then done a life lesson with it. This is where you can do a life lesson. Hey, people make mistakes. You should be smarter with that. Respect, things like that. Don't have those things on your phone. I respect result, whatever it is. And then let her teach the kids the wrong things and stuff like that instead of losing her job. Who's the piece just the story? Frank, go first. Um, it's simple. It, it's the uh, it's the education board for for firing her. I mean, it, it seems well, not fired, but removed. No, what is there removed? is a difference. She's what? not there at the school. She's not dealing with anybody, but she has not been terminated. She, I mean, okay. so therefore, there, the union still has to fight for her job, but she has right. not been terminated with no pay. Technically, her job's still there, but she's not allowed to be around any of the students right now. Well, I would say it's still them because um, it seems like she was able to prove that she did not airdrop this uh, this tape and that uh, somebody else did. So why should she be penalized with what somebody else did? And uh, what she did most- Well, because they can't do. prove. She could have hit airdrop by mistake. She could have tried to airdrop yeah. it. She's just saying she didn't. She could have tried to share it with a friend at work. Yeah, I, I still, I'm taking her side. I, I, I think that she did something, uh, she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, she, she, if she did do it, it was an error. And in this country, we accept errors and we go forward. That's we all. used to, now we just call them out and cancel them. It's a new uh, thing now. You can't, well, well we got to make it. They're canceling her. They literally, something. that's what a cancellation is. They <laughs> removed her from a situation. They canceled okay, her. We, we got to draw a line and stick up for people. We do. Adam, who's the piece of shit? Uh, so my wife's a teacher, okay. and uh, she teaches at a tech school in Bridgeport, Connecticut. So uh, she can sleep with her students because they're like 23. Yes, and they're old, and, <laughs> and they've got like wrenches and stuff. So it's good. Well, the, I tell people, like the like, talking about hack-ass jokes, I say that they have like the metal detectors outside the school 
they scan you for weapons going in. If you don't have one, they give you one. It's <laughs> like it's, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I'd say the asshole is Apple for making an unsecure, unsecure shitty ass platform that allows this sh- kind of stuff to happen <laughs> and get her in trouble. So Steve Jobs, uh, let's go dig him up and beat the shit out of him. And it's his fault. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Adam, up, I, beat them up, put them back. School, uh, Adam, I know that school. I live in Fairfield County, and uh, I full, I'm not saying anything against them, but they do have Airdrop Tuesday. So, <laughs> so, so you got to remember that. That's so school. I will say, I will say, yeah. My so yeah, my wife is a teacher, and the 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 union will will defend her, and the school has to the school has to follow the steps. They have to remove her, no matter what. I think that she should probably be placed in a different school. She should keep her job but be placed in a different school because she can't walk into that classroom again. They've yeah. all seen her hoo-ha. They all seen her getting plowed. She can't, you know, she can't face those students again and have a Adam, level of it depends of on what she looks like. It's true. It's if true. she's hot, which I don't think but, she is, they'd be it'd be a different story. I think the fact that she's gross, that's why <laughs> they're not letting her back. No, I think it's it, you can't command a level of respect to somebody if they've seen you on your knees taking a, a facial. Like you, you, you can't sit you. in front. You yes, can't you sit can. in, uh, to a high school boy. You're talking about a high school boy, not an adult. A high school boy. That's the, everything. Those kids it, would no, listen forever. That, yeah. That, it's something so you want respect? You didn't want respect when that dude was blowing his nut on your face. Man, no, you were like, hey, can cool. I stay after too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you I mean, you want Adam, me to double check my homework? Something to shoot for. Now, hey, oh, this- hey, oh. What do you think? I'm no, hey, oh. Shoot, shoot. shoot, you did a jizz joke. Uh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> 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 All right, Dan, who's the piece of shit? I feel like the students are pieces of shit, but she is a teacher. She should have known that, which makes her the piece of shit by default. You can't you can't work in a school and just walk around oblivious with like sex tapes on your phone. <laughs> I've I've seen like I've I've been a substitute teacher. I was like a student teacher for a while. I've seen kids like reach into teachers' pockets and pull their phones out like a pickpocket. Like you have to be you have to be on guard. Like how naive do you have to be to let this happen? You got to cross all your T's and dot all your I's when you're a teacher. And you know what? Here's the part that I is baffling me. She had it on her phone. Like, that's such a male, like, the guy is usually the one filming it. It's on her phone, which either hmm. means his phone was dying, and she's like, babe, let me film it on yours. And he didn't even know. And he was probably like, hey, I'm <laughs> driving by quick. I need that tape. Air drop it to me. <laughs> and it probably dropped everywhere. He's like, I want it on my phone. Because I want to go if, show it to everybody at work. What if, what if she was pegging him? And that and she was filming it. Oh, then she'd be a hero and she'd have a show on Netflix. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she if she's pegging, oh god, then it'd be a whole it'd be okay now. The new alphabet would be LGBTQ and Z. That's it. So Bobby, uh, oh go ahead. Where's Frank? I, I, I think I'm I have a change of heart here. Uh, because the woman, the way you described that, she was really ugly no i don't I, just made that I made that up i don't know i don't know well if she was ugly yeah i mean this is i mean this is a medal she's getting i mean and she's proud of it and she just wants to show the world she might not be look ugly at me. look at me look what i could do <laughs> I, I would say she's a piece of shit now how does your first marriage that work bobby <laughs> go ahead <laughs> The piece of shit. Well, you left out the last line of her article, which said her boyfriend's comedic magic career was unaffected. <laughs> All right. This is clearly step two of the classic comedic magician boyfriend takeover, where he already infiltrated her mind and convinced her to tell her current boyfriend that she is now pansexual and needs to see other people or the relationships over. And at that point, he had to make the decision where he's like, do I want the pain now or later on? He chose later on. Now, he's still winning the game because, let's be honest, the non-comedic boyfriend is more charming, so he has to do the grand thing. Some guys will do things like burn an apartment down. He just airdropped her sex tape to all her students. It creates a tragedy in her life. He gets to be the hero. Clearly, it's the boyfriend. He's the piece of shit. I don't know if that has anything to do with the story, but I I agree. (laughs) I think I agree. (laughs) 
Bobby, should I do one more before you do your thing, or you want to do your thing? Yeah, one why more? not, man? My thing's evergreen. Yes, it is. And it's beautiful. <laughs> man allegedly injects own blood into store food in, in a revolting video. It was a blood trans food zition. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and New York Post. Who's the fucking asshole wrote that? Ben Cost again, Bobby. Ben Cost with the pun. Blood transfusion. Closed circuit TV cameras captured the revolting moment. A lawyer in the UK allegedly injected grocery store food with his own blood. The shocking footage, which was presented to jurors <laughs> in uh, Crown Court on Tuesday, showed the 37-year-old defendant. I can't pronounce this. It's all vowels. It's L-E-O-A-A-I. Yeah, Count Dracula. Count Dracula apparently sticking syringes into apples, chicken tikka fillets, and ready to eat meals at a Sansbury supermarket. The bloodbath was part of a grocery store rampage that took place August 25th um, at three different markets in West London. This behavior was bizarre, his lawyer, Kiri Angrilopoulos, told the jury during a court appearance, adding that Count Dracula was not a fit insane not of a fit insane mind during the incidents no shit um there's videos on their site we're not going to play them but he's just injecting blood into like all the fucking food basting food with blood was just the tip of the iceberg at same berries the cretin oh, they said they wrote cretin which i like allegedly threw eggs at both staff and customers and pushed a security guard in the chest <laughs> at the mayhem wasn't confined to indoors as Count Dracula was also accused of chucking an empty needle at a National Health Service surgeon outside, hitting her in the chest, the Independent reported. He was finally detained outside a bar after allegedly <laughs> picking up a potted plant and heaving it through the open doorway. A total of 21 syringes were recovered from the bloody crime scene. Meanwhile, as a precaution, the impacted stores were forced to throw away and restock food before reopening, which resulted in hemorrhaging costs uh, they, of about 200, <laughs> they did it in English money. Uh, $281,000, basically, at one store, $200,000 at another store, and $160,000 at another store. At the hearing, a psychiatrist said Count Dracula felt as it was living in a Truman Show simulation where everything was fake, a reference to the 1980 Jim Carrey comedy. The doctor added that the man also believed he had a device implanted in his brain and hoped that his rash behavior would alert the real police to his predicament. So he's claiming... He thinks the world's watching him and that he's had to be saved and he can just do whatever he wants. Uh, his attorney concluded that the defendant was extremely unwell at the time. As you can hear, heard from the two consultant uh, doctors, this was not the acts of someone who may feel in a fit, insane mind. This isn't the first time someone's been accused of seasoning foods with bodily fluids. And on Friday, a, a twisted ex teacher in Louisiana was sentenced to 41 years after admitting to feeding her students cupcakes that were spiked with husband semen. Which, by oh the way, God. I wish I had that story. Who's the piece of shit in the story? Dan, go first. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I mean, when the government's reading your brain waves, you got to resort <laughs> to some extreme measures. You got to let so, them know. You got to let yeah. them know. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I, yeah, I get, I, I guess I, it's hard to say who's a piece of shit when one of them's bad shit crazy, but I do, I would like to comment on the fact that like the majority of the time he had this ingenious plot of injecting apples with blood, but then he like, at one point he resorted to like this childish tactic of throwing eggs. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's what Halloween pranksters do. <laughs> yeah. They really should have listed the crimes in the opposite order they did. Cause they opened with the injecting blood into food and ended up with a potted plant. And I was like, Oh, that's not so bad. And but not even started, through a window, like, just through an open doorway. Like, yeah. yeah they, they started with, he threw a potted plant. I would be like, like, fuck and then he threw eggs fuck and he pushed That's someone cool. okay Jesus. cool then like he injected <laughs> blood into food you're like oh damn. <laughs> no. yeah, it's like the old john mulaney joke where he's like uh i'm gay i have aids i'm homeless and i'm new in town it's like no you you, 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 you lead with new in town it's like <laughs> frank is this easy you know you don't pick on the poor guy it is the people the that own all these establishments. What? I mean, you're talking about $500,000 in damage to fruit, to vegetables. Are you serious at a potted plant? <laughs> How much is that? How much? No store owner was able to call the cops to get this guy arrested? He's no. running around with syringes. They found 21 oh, syringes. Oh, okay. You're going near that guy? I'm not going near that guy. Well, if, if it was my job at security at one of these places, I would. 
If they I mean, had, a, I yeah. think it was your job. I think an eighty-year-old man was security at these places. That's why somebody was running around throwing eggs. <laughs> I still say it's the owners. I mean, you, you make a phone call. You call the cop on the call. Well, they still wouldn't have stopped. I mean, even if they called them, the five hundred thousand dollars in damages of fruit, Frank, and vegetables. Frank, he wasn't black, and this is England. He, they weren't going to show up. They're English. They're just going to say, "Stop it." How do you know he wasn't black? Because he's English, and his name was Beelzebub, whatever the fuck his name was. I couldn't even say it. That's kind of a good... That, that seems like an interesting fight. Like, if he's... If one guy has a guy with... Uh, has syringes with blood in him, and the cop just has, like, a billy club and no gun, like, how... Like, who... What what, 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 what money would you put on one contender versus the other? Oh, syringe guy all day. It's like 10 to 1 odds. Because... Billy club guy, if he, even if he hits you, you're happy because now you've got your own blood and you get more blood for your syringes. Like, so he's just helping. Huh. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> Probably be kind of anemic from blood loss, though. Was it all his blood, though? Like, he must have been saving up blood for, you know, months in some sort of blood bank, if you will. What's worse, if it's not all his blood or if it is all his blood? I think if it's worse, if it's other people's blood. I don't know. Oh, shit. I don't know. I think it's worse if it's his because like it's like a dying thing because that is, if it's his own blood, then I believe he's crazy. <clears throat> if it's not his own blood, then I don't believe he's crazy. Adam, who's the piece of shit? Uh, whoever wrote that hack ass. Ben headline. Cost. Ben Cost writes the hackiest <laughs> thing for New York Post always. We've, he's yeah, been our piece that, of shit many dude, times. That dude is the worst. He he needs to have his blood injected into uh, he has no blood. Type of... <laughs> Um, I, I'm got the the guy is the the guy is crazy. He's obviously un, uh, unwell, so it's hard to blame him. But this is the uh, if I found out that I ate there and I ate some food injected with this guy's blood, uh, now I'm more intimate with that guy than I have been with like most of my ex girlfriends. So he's, I I think we're like. We have to be at least he owes me alimony like Frank owes that Russian his Russian bride alimony. Yes. There's some type of connection there. I agree. You should get yeah, your that, money that, soon. That, that, yes. <laughs> JG Bobby. Uh, for me, it's as simple as this. Uh Leviticus nineteen twenty six. You shall not eat any flesh with blood in it. You shall not interpret omens or tell fortunes. Seems like this guy might have been a bit of a comedic magician here. Uh, that's that's what I'm picking up from Leviticus. No, it's a psychiatrist. Oh, he has mental health problems. He's unfit for trial. It's like, where were you before he injected all the meat with blood? It's real easy to show up hindsight 2020 and be like, yeah, we should have we shouldn't do anything. But you weren't there to stop it ahead of time. You know, psychology and therapy. It's bullshit. Right, Dan? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. OK, first of all, he's not crazy. He's, he's faking just a crazy. Unwell. He's no. He, no, come on. I know. Right now, you can't tell. <laughs> Wait, did he have AIDS? First of all, Bobby, stop it. Um, <laughs> just take a little time, Pat. Are you just gonna keep doing music quotes the entire <laughs> fucking show? And am I that the only one? Giggle. Is this my Truman Show where I'm the only <laughs> one in on this thing? Um, <laughs> That's the go-to crazy person thing, the Truman Show. That's their thing since there has been a Truman Show. Since that came out, you say that thing in court all the time. They, they go, fuck it. That's what they must think, that the world's watching them because we're on the social media and all that shit like that. So we just let it go. It's an easy out to say that. This is just a fucking sick fuck. There are people out there that want to fucking hurt people. And this dude, and they think they get attention from it. He's doing something that he knows he's not going to get the electric chair for. He's doing something he knows he will get arrested for. And we'll probably get a Netflix documentary about him in three years. And a lot of podcasts talking about him. Because people love English fucking weirdos. So he's running around going to fucking their version of 7-Eleven, which Bobby fights with all the time. If this was 7-Eleven, Bobby be there with syringes of blood, putting it in there, getting mad at them because they don't deliver his food to him. This guy is just a sick fuck who probably got broken up with a girl who probably left him for a comedic <laughs> magician. And that's why he's putting blood in stuff to see if he can remove that blood from the fruit. That's what was happening. Yeah. But dude, can you imagine if he really had the Truman disease where he thought he was in the Truman show, the relief he felt when he got arrested, he's like, 
wait, you're arresting me? We're not calling cut? You're not canceling? The... It's not a shit. Yes! I mean, no, like, my bad. That's bad. But, like, thank God I'm free. Oh, thank I'm God I'm free. not Jim Carrey. Yeah, like, thank God. <laughs> thank God I'm not the movie I watched that I thought was about me. That's what I'm saying is bullshit. You know this. You know that there's guy a movie so- called The Truman Show in his canon. Okay, so no, he's not happening to him because it's why would they show him the movie in his fake movie? And and that guy's just going to believe that this is still all part of the movie. Like him getting arrested is part of the movie. Yeah. It's so. Yeah, fuck you know, I, I still don't understand. <clears throat> I mean, sumo oranges. It's called about it's spelled this Ukraine. Thing. It's spelled feel- U K R. It's right behind. It's not me, Crane. It's not our Crane. It's Ukraine. 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 I feel like- Ukraine. Ukraine. Oh. No, but sumo oranges are on sale at three forty nine at Whole Food. A half England. a million dollars in damage. I don't understand Frank, that, that nobody can stop this guy. English once people he- have the worst farms. And once he injected them, Frank, now they're blood oranges, which are three That's times right. as expensive. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if that guy actually did see the Truman Show, like his response will be like, you, you know, there are only so many stories, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus fake TV show where they follow <laughs> you around. Yeah. What's the next one? He's going to walk around just fucking with people a long time. And then they go, what are you doing? He's like, aren't I dead? Isn't this the sixth sense? Aren't I just, haven't I been dead from, from Mark Wahlberg's brother the entire time? Like, no. Fucking moron. <laughs> They should do a sequel to the Truman Show, like after he gets out and finds out he's just in another bigger TV show, <laughs> just to keep fucking with those people even more. Bobby, do you have the ability to pull a picture up for me, quick? Yeah, what's up, buddy? All right, I I'm not gonna read the whole story, but man, we need to see the picture of this lady. The New York. Are Post you just, sending it to me? No, I was just gonna say to you, look for this. Uh, just put semen cupcake students. I saw this. Yeah, I saw this lady. Yep, Ka- Cynthia Perk. We get her whole name. The other one, we don't get nothing. But we got Cynthia Perk. Now I, I, I got think more. We may have covered this on a retro, Pat. <clears throat> no, this isn't old. Well, I think she just. This got happened sent- a couple of days ago. I think she oh. just got sentenced. I think okay, the- so it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we covered this? A, a twisted Louisiana ex teacher who admitted to giving her students cu- cupcakes laced with her husband's sperm has been sentenced to forty-one years in prison. Forty-one years. For jizz in a cupcake. Well, they gave my her ex-wife for, they gave one her... time bought, paid for somebody to make a um, a vase with his own hair in it, and I thought that was gross. He like put it in the kiln and he spun it around. And his hair went in it, and I didn't know that. And we put mashed potatoes in it, and I'm like, "What is that line?" She goes, "That's his hair." I go, "I'm never eating out of that bowl," and she got mad at me. This person put semen in cupcakes. Forty-one years. Why didn't the guy who gave me the bowl get ten years? My brother once threw a water balloon filled with gravy at some kid, and it was fantastic. (laughs) How old was he? I don't know, 12 maybe? Oh, I was hoping like 43. (laughs) Cynthia, oh, I got to let you share. Hold on. Did she get like a year for every cupcake? Or every student, possibly. That's what I'm thinking. It's like either one of the two. It's just so, 41 is so odd. Well, she has no, that's not her. (laughs) <laughs> yeah why that's we, her dude what that's her man why really? is she what? what why is she fake Marilyn Monroe why is her face melting <clears throat> that's not Cynthia Perkins no she's a good picture of her even her mugshot's pretty good my bad wrong window yeah wrong window Cynthia Perkins now I hate to say it if you're a teenage kid and she gives you cupcakes, and she even says there's semen in it, you're probably going to have one. Are we sure that it's not the same woman? Look at that birthmark. What do you mean, are we sure? Yeah. Where did, sure? I don't know where you got the other picture. Does she have mustache stubble? <laughs> no, but the guy does. Yeah, there's a picture of the guy right underneath. He looks like fucking, uh, who's the guy who owns UFC? Dana White. He looks like Dana, Dana White. White. That's not Dana White. <laughs> that's not that's, Cynthia. Is that, that Cynthia that Perkins? On the other side, man. That that facial birthmarks on the other side. Why do you good, keep pulling good, that? Good analysis. I don't know. 
seems like a good thing to put in the world. But it's, it's not, that's not Cynthia Perkins. No, that's Lindsay Lohan. That's not Lindsay Lohan. It yes, was no, it was Lindsay Lohan. It's not, really? it's, it's not is Lindsay Lohan. It was Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Frank, Lohan looks like old Lindsay Bisquick Lohan? now. Yeah, wow. No, she looks like old Bisquick now. But there was a you time you shut she the good. fuck up right now. He does, dude. This, I don't <laughs> care. That is, my I used to love her too. Stand, okay? She looks like she Mel- still she, looks she, amazing. She could still get it. She's coming back for a Netflix Christmas movie next year. It's gonna be the year, Lindsay. <laughs> fucking bite your fucking tongue, okay? Lindsay Lohan looks like when Johnny Knoxville dresses up like a grandpa. That's what she looks like right now. Then I want to fuck Johnny Knoxville as a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> See, there, that's the guy whose semen was in your cupcake. Now you're oh. mad. Yeah. That's 41 years. How come he didn't go to jail? Uh... Did he jerk off into the cupcake batter, or did, I'm like, guessing she... she didn't just keep it in there, walk, waddle over, go over a bowl, and drop it in? How do you transport jizz? I don't uh, know. Take a pop shot in the mouth and just go and spit it into the bowl, Pat. Okay, Mister Experience. I... <laughs> <laughs> We've all done this. What? <laughs> not... I've never made cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're you're thinking of cream pie, by the way, not a cupcake, Pat. Listen, they're both delicious treats. <laughs> How dare you? And kids love them both. She was sentenced for why wasn't the husband? Uh, she has no possibility for parole for 40 years. So that's why he's oh. 41, I think, because then afterwards she can have a parole. Wow. Uh, Perkins has faced 72 charges of various sex crimes. 68 of which were dropped in her plea agreement. As part of the deal, she agreed to testify against her husband, Dennis Perkins, a former sheriff's deputy who's facing 150 criminal charges. This is Lindsay Lohan. What are we doing? Um, that looks like soggy oatmeal. That's Lindsay, Lo- that's Lindsay Lohan with a filter on. With a filter and everything pulled back. And yeah, and she looks <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's Lindsay that's Lohan. Her. That was yeah. her. That's, that's Lindsay Lohan. Danny Trejo's fucking Lindsay Danny Lohan. Danny Trejo, yeah, that was <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Okay, I'm not saying Lindsay Lohan's gross, but she's nothing like she used to be. No, who is? There are <laughs> some girls you would just me, Frank. For. Well, well, I agree on that one. Yeah, I'm better now <laughs> than I ever was. Are you fucking kidding me? So are you. Of all the times I've eaten cupcakes at school or work, like I got, I, I, I must have had like gallons of cum. I, must have... I don't, I don't, I don't think, think it I... has anything to do with the cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know that uh, back in the day, uh, Dan, when they gave those little milk cartons of milk, the kid on the side, he wasn't missing. That was his cum. And they would just show you. His no. like, <laughs> <laughs> this is Cody flavor. Like, mmm, Cody. <laughs> All right, as part of the deal, she agreed to testify against her husband, Dennis Perkins, a former sheriff deputy who's facing 150 criminal charges, many of which are also sex crimes. So they did a lot of sex crimes, and this is just one of them. The couple were arrested in 2019 <laughs> after they allegedly sexually abused a child together. Oh, I didn't know it was going to get sad. Oh, my gosh. Together? Uh, I guess they did everything together. Wait a minute. They, she, was, she was accused of sexually assaulting a child, and then she became a teacher afterward? I think, she, I think it was during. Oh. I don't think she got so inspired. She's like, they got more here? <laughs> <laughs> Let she me, went let there me. and she injected them with blood. Perkins filed for divorce from her husband following their arrest and alleged that Dennis had manipulated her. Oh, fucking bullshit. That's bullshit. You know that guy was doing that for her. He was all slung up on the pussy and like, yeah, girl, we'll touch a kid. It's fun. The couple were busted after authorities received a tip at the National Center for Missing Exploited Children. The investigators later found nude photos of them with the minor. Okay, I thought this was a fun cupcake story. I didn't oh, know we were getting it? naked with a kid. God damn it. I just wanted to get the part. What, what's the, count 15 in the original indictment against the couple alleges the semen was mixed into both the desserts and energy drinks before it was served to victims. Red Bull. It's supposed to have semen in it, right? So that's, that's fine. So, yeah, I don't I think we have to ask who the piece of shit in this story is. It's Lindsay Lohan. Hypothetically, if you're the kid who drank his semen, you're a 17 year old student, right? And you just show up to his hearing. I don't think hearing. they were high school kids. How many years ago was it, though? No, no, no. I mean, like, I think these were, like, kid kids. No, you don't give kid kids energy drinks. You don't give adults cupcakes. Yeah, you do. 
Well, fact how old is, were the kids? This is important. I'm trying to find out. Well, it's um, obvious that it's obvious that the husband was a magician, a comedy magician. Because yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. You get the theme of the show. <laughs> Well, he was close. He was a he was a deputy sheriff. Which is fucking boring. That's not, not even really a real deputy. Sheriff. Not really a sheriff. sheriff. <laughs> so he's not really, just choose one, okay? You're not good at either one. Just be a deputy and a sheriff. Um, I'm not, it's not saying minor. I mean, yeah, it's saying minor. Oh my god! And their attorney is named Paul Woody Scott. Don't be Woody in Woody. a semen story when you're the de- when you're the fucking lawyer. Hi, I'm huge <laughs> erection, and my client did not rape that woman. <laughs> where, where was she? No, I'm just trying to see. Well, let's say it's 17, right? And this dude made you drink his jizz, and you just show up to the day he's junior high. Supposed- junior high. Okay, and how many That's years ago? That's three can handle a little cum. 11, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, and, and then how, real how many dumb, years real ago? dumb 14. <clears throat> how many years ago, Pat? Two, uh, two years ago. So you're 16 now. Okay. You're 16 years old. You drank this dude's gin. If you were, no, I said if you were dumb. The oldest you probably are is 15, but you're probably 13. Okay. So you're 13. You drank some dude's jizz. You go and to your dad's. And ate it. And ate it. <clears throat> and thought this the green was the best This is one of those times I just have a crazy premise, and you've just derailed it so much it's not going to I fun. want you to realize that he ate it. They ate it. You can drink jizz. That's like bubble tea. Bobby left. Oh no! Is Kenny Gargokakowitz going to show up? No. (laughs) Bobby, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a premise. I was trying to give you more info. Please come back. I apologize. I'm here. I'm just doing a dab. No, 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 Bobby. Oh, oh, Dan, hold on. Bobby, let me say something your ex girlfriend never did. Please come back. Oh no, she did. (laughs) That's what she did the first time around. I was like right about to get into a nice, healthy, positive relationship. And it was like, Abracadabra, I'm here. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Your premise. No, no, we're good. It's no, not no, a, it's no, really no. It will always be funny because it's delivered by you. The the rug drug, whatever it is, Bobby Timbero. So let's say you're 16. You drink this dude's jizz. Yeah. And you just like go to your dad's gun locker, right? You put in the code real quick. You show up to court in a wig and you shoot him nine times in the chest. Then you plead not guilty. Is there a jury in the country that's going to convict you of murder? I don't think so. There is. Want to know why? Because you should have shot him 41 times. One for every year. That she got in jail. She got 41 years. So I would have shot him 41 times and then called it even. That works. Or shoot her. She gets 21 shots and he gets 20. I would just put the rounds into his chest. I wouldn't worry about it. Are you more mad at the person that baked jizz cupcakes or the person that had jizz that was in there? Both. Fucking both. <laughs> now, the kid who got molested, do you think he got snacks? Because if you just get molested and don't even get cupcakes and drink, like, remember South Park movie? They're like, is there punch and pie? Like, <laughs> Like I hope there was punch and pie because if he is as if they have a naked picture with a boy and he never got and he's like wait you guys got treats <laughs> I just got fucked. The worst part is yeah that kid right he they he told on him they're getting arrested he's like oh finally he goes to therapy he he's didn't tell on better. him he's finally clear and then he hears the news teacher and husband arrested for baking cupcakes into or semen into cupcakes and he's like I ate so many fucking cupcakes yeah. like he's upstairs. He comes down with his bat. His mom's like, Timmy, where are you going? He's like, I ate too many cupcakes. <laughs> She's like, I think he snapped. He, uh, he snapped. That's the best part. They didn't, he didn't tell. He didn't snap. He didn't snitch. They found the photo in the phone and then that, that got added on. But they didn't, he didn't tell. He just took the fucking and kept on trucking. I think it's the old saying. By the way, uh, you know who hates this story? Silk City Hot Sauce. Silk City Hot Sauce, man. They hate people. Listen. They put the greatest ingredients into all their hot sauces. No jizz. That says it on the back. No. When you're looking for allergens, it says wheat, soy, milk, jizz. It's all on there. They don't do it at all. <laughs> Frank, I want you to know something. This is wow. not 100%, but it's close. I was on a podcast the other day with someone else, a ski mask guy, and they were talking We're talking about the hot sauces and uh, – and he asked me why we don't have a hot sauce. And Jeff, the guy from Soak City Hot Sauce, 
had in the past made a joke. Remember the episode we did about duck sauce and you said homemade duck yeah. sauce? on Right, right. He's been playing with the idea of making a spicy duck sauce, homemade duck sauce for Frank's duck sauce. And we've got not confirmation, but close that they're working on that. And there could be a spicy duck sauce with your dumb face on it or something. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I like and I, I said, I, I hope it happens right the day after you die. Like, so you never get to see the sauce. And then we'll give it out. We'll sell it. Bobby and I will outside of your funeral, like merch. Yeah. And then you'll pop up and go, surprise, I'm not dead. Give me 50%. Can I do my version of the read now? Please. Is your name a derivation of the Anglo Saxon name Robert? Then Silk City Hot Sauce wants to give you a hot sauce before me. That's right. They've got Bob Biggerstaff's Chipotle Barbecue. And now they've got Rob Saul's <laughs> Bloody Mary Mix. Bob Kelly's Lard Sauce. Bob Levy's Levy Land Sauce. Just reach out. I'm sure they'll give you a sauce too. They don't have those three. I don't know. I was just going with it. Oh, I thought they did. I was like, holy shit, they have Lard Sauce? <laughs> no, Rob Saul's got his Bloody Mary Mix coming. And I was just thinking we should put Frank's above that. Oh, I might. That's probably easier to make, though. Fair. Bloody Mary is very easy. Man, that's an easy thing. That's not even. I mean, that's just they're throwing Tabasco and fucking tomato juice. Frank's takes a long time because Jeff has to learn to be Asian. <laughs> All right, Bobby, do your final thing, and then we're gonna get the fuck out of here. Bobby, hang on, real quick. All right, don't mind us. We're just on a show. Sorry, man. I'm doing some prep. I didn't know you said you were going to close it. I read a second cum, cum, cum cupcake, cum cake. Is that called? Is it called a cum cake? <laughs> Let's do a third cum story. All right, ready to <laughs> go. Dan, if you had to make a cum cupcake, what flavor would you make? Oh, Besides man. cum, what goes with like bleachy taste and smell? Is that what it tastes like, Dan? I don't know, but they say what? it smells like bleach. All right, who's they? The gays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people that I meet with sometimes. <laughs> in the, what in what the flavor lots? would you go? I'd go chocolate. I think that would mask it. I think vanilla would accent it. Hmm. I don't know. Cilantro kind of has that has like a weird smell what the to fuck it. Cilantro cupcake you eat. I don't know. It's like something Caribbean. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be at I'm trying to be original. Frank, what flavor goes with jizz cakes? It's so obvious. Duck sauce. <laughs> yes, of course it does. Thank you. Everything is duck sauce from now on. I once, <laughs> had, was it. I once had blue cheese flavored ice cream. How was that? Gross? It was it was actually kind of good. Like maybe it needed maybe it needed something like cum or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pat, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Your story? Just your regular thing? No, no, no. What I was trying to set up. I was trying to count the number of five minute duck sauce recipes i could on google oh and there's just there's just too many right there's right. way too many five minute ducks okay recipes. but we want we, we have to bottle it and make tons not just <laughs> enough for like one guy to not have a pack at his house just so jeff knows i love you i'm just busting balls you're my favorite thank you for being an our only lasting sponsor we yeah. love you that thank you for being our only sponsor that probably wasn't part of a pyramid scheme yeah frankly <laughs> he's a sponsor that actually was also a patron and stayed yeah, Not like the other one who became a patron to try to force his sponsorship on us. And ran away. Which, by the way, I'm kidding. Max is a wonderful guy, and I hope he's safe out there traveling in this fucking terrible weather right now. Yeah, um, man, I hope he's doing better than I am. Yeah, no one uh, So I uh, got approached. I, I, Adam, I know you don't know me well. I've had a couple of hit shows on Nickelodeon. One was a game show. Then we had a couple of made-for-Disney movies uh, featuring Gene Hackman's return, dealing with the woke era. Uh, now I feel like it's time for me to pivot into more of a dramatic comedy, um, less of like family friendly, more like adult humor, right, Dan? You get that. Oh yeah. I'm sure in animation, it comes to that time where you're like, I wanna do stuff for adults. Um, and the, the hot thing right now is like reboots from a different perspective, right? So like, have you any of you guys seen The Mentalist? Yep. You have it. What? Mm -hmm. So Adam, you know, are you familiar with the show or just kind of in passing? <clears throat> Uh, uh, I few, watched a few episodes. I knew so just to give a, a basic synopsis to everybody, there's a guy who used to be a mentalist or a comedic magician um, who would basically 
went on TV and was like, analyze this serial killer, Red John. And then Red John killed his whole family to get him revenge and be like, you're fake, you're not real. And uh, then the guy be- works for the FBI. And ultimately, the twist is he gets Red John in the end, obviously, right? It's a long TV show. Um, if you're going to watch it, like, you're going to be like, oh, they got him like six times. Then it's going to just be the next season. They're like, nah, that wasn't really Red John. And it does get a little frustrating by the seventh season. Um, that said, CBS seems to be open to the idea of a, like, kind of in the Joker theme, pro Red John reboot. It's like the origin story, the inspiration. So pretty much what you're going to have is like a real comedian. He's out performing. He's like pursuing his dream, right? And there's this guy. He like does, you know, we'll say comedic magic. Why not? Um, And he's like interested in the guy's girlfriend. So while the guy's away with her, he convinces a psycho to burn down her apartment. And in doing so, like the tragedy really creates an opening for him to move in and push the other guy out because he's pursuing his dreams. And it's really like the path from Red John, the comedian, into Red John, the serial killer. Because then obviously he has to start killing people. That's the only logical thing to start doing at that step. So, Adam, what I'm really looking for is some insight into what could motivate. Like, how do we really set this comedic magician up to set this guy for failure? And actually what I'm going to do is analyze how accurately we can get to the real situation. Pat, you got any insights either? No. No. I thought you were just doing a thing to Adam and Dan. I kind of zoned out. My bad. <laughs> no, it's all good, dude. But yeah, um, Red, he's the worst. I hope they get him. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Opposite. He's the good guy. Yeah. In the end, you're going to kind of root for him against Patrick nope. Jane. You're like, I kind of hope he gets person. the redemption he deserves. So how about, how Go about ahead, Adam. this? How about do this? In, in kind of like a spin it's uh where where our protagonist is actually hunting down other comedy magicians and posing as a comedy magician to kill other comedy magicians that are hack in Ooh. kind of like a ish <clears throat> you know show and uh and that's you know that's his that's his thing i kind of like that that's very good yeah, Dan, what do you got about bobby I thought he would be the lead in that. I mean, I wouldn't be Red John if you've seen The Mentalist. He's a tall Texas guy. He's in the first episode. They give it away. He'd be the great who meanie because he's mean. <laughs> Dan. Yes. Answer whatever the fuck Bobby asks. I'm not sure. Like, so uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I would have to think about it. Well, that's you, the whole show. Do you want to know the spin, Pat? The, the spin is. Houdini was actually a really <clears throat> awful magician. I've read that. He was, was he a really, really he was a really shitty magician, and but he was an incredible escapologist. That's an escape artist. Yeah, and was so good at branding himself and so good at hyping himself that he lasted longer. His name has lasted longer and has been linked to magicians than any other magician that was more famous, like Keller or. Um, you know, or even Devant, uh, or even the person that he stole, took the name from, which is Robert Houdin. And so, um, yeah, but would you, if you ask younger people about magicians, I think they'd say David Blaine right now. Um, Chris Angel, David Blaine, he was uh, there. Shin Chris Lim. Angel was there, but I think he Chris Ramsey, Chris Gordon Ramsey, Ramsey. I, think, I think Chris Ramsey, uh, <laughs> a lot of TikTok guys, a lot of YouTube guys, um, Magic so, Johnson. <laughs> magic yeah he, how is a magician not called magic johnson that's the greatest magic name in the basketball but what a waste careful made, we're getting really close to burning my second best premise since we already burned my first one he, <laughs> magic johnson uh, escaped magic johnson, aids yeah he made aids disappear so that's amazing and there it is <laughs> yep i knew it the second i said it dan's like i don't care i see all green lights Go. Is that is that what the joke was? Obviously. No, I, no, 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 no. Mine's mine's much more racist than that. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding, Dan. You didn't have to say oh okay so quickly. So, <laughs> so if you want if you want a fun if you want a fun website, go to theglom.com. The L O M G L O O M Gloom. The Gloom, the Glom, the Gloom. Is it porn? No. Bobby, you should have asked first. <laughs> just, just kid takes. You're like, God damn it. 
Yeah, go to, meet, go to meatspin.com. Yeah. <laughs> no. Go to cu- Cupcake Recipes. Uh, uh-oh. So, uh-oh. Hold on. Hold on. Was- Not the glom. Just glom, right? No, no, no. It's, uh, it, it is. Dot net? Uh, is it dot net? <laughs> <laughs> Not dot net. Why would it be dot org? Uh, it is. <laughs> dot edu. The G-L-O-M-M dot com. Uh, oh, M-M. Glum. Mm. Glum. Yeah. That's what those kids say when they eat those cum cum cakes. Glum. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. My mouth is sticky. Why is this cupcake salty? Why does this taste like my uncle at Thanksgiving? So this is the Global League of Magicians and Mentalists. Oh, shit. Are we supposed to be here? Yeah, yeah. So scroll down a little bit. L- illegal. S- How many about, nerds so are in this thing? Every single magician in the world is. So Don't be if you convicted go, of a sex crime. That I is hope. the only that is the only thing you cannot do that if you do anything, you can do you can be a bad magician, you can be shitty, you can Why be Why do they have to separate that sentence where people get because, lost in it? Because because <laughs> because no 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 click if you click on there is a list of banned people from this <laughs> group. Because <clears throat> those are the people who have committed sex crimes. Nice. Jeepers. Yes. Jeepers. That's not a thing you say after <laughs> sex crimes. <laughs> you don't say jeepers. <laughs> Frank Golly. fell asleep. Sorry. Good night, Frank. <laughs> I'm reading the ban list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's banned? Who's banned, Frank? Uh, my name wasn't there. So I'm oh, there. good. All right. Good job. <laughs> okay. But yes. So we'll, uh, we'll finish it there. If you want to go, you want to, you're not a sex offender. You can get some city hot sauce and go to that website. Enjoy Adam. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people follow you? Thank you. Uh, my website, Adam uh, link tree slash Adam Parisi uh, with all the links and fun stuff that I'm doing. Um, come see me. I'll be back at uh, comics uh, with Jim Spinato sometime in March and in April. Uh, links are all up there. Nice. Dan. You can follow me on uh, Ghosty Films on most social media sites and Dan Brown Comedy on Instagram. Uh, that's uh. my favorite. He, Dan does that on stage after every joke. And when we were at comics, this one lady's black lady could not get over it. And every time he'd go, uh, she'd go, he did it again. Uh, you just yell it back like you didn't know. I'm exasperated. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no, we, we didn't mention, like, didn't you do a, a show in a cupcake factory one time? We didn't mention that the whole time we were talking about I, jizz I cupcakes. Host, I hosted a bunch of shows. Pat what was he that saying? And we, no, and we were saying we did jizz cupcake. We never put the two together. Good job. Yeah. Man. Oh, man, that, that was, was bad. Like, we those we were dropped fun the ball shows, on though. that one. Hey, yeah. Dan, didn't, didn't we do a show at a cupcake place in Bridgeport? Many, many years ago. Oh, yeah, for that fat bitch. Remember that fat bitch? Yeah, yeah. What was her name, fat bitch? I don't know. Mosher. Yeah, Yeah. good memory. Yeah, she had that picture with a gun and a knife. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Frank. All right. Pat and I will be at Comics of Mohegan Sun on March 3rd and March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Good night to celebrate with us. And every week you can And Dan will most unlikely be there. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) And every week, hopefully, you'll find me on the POS podcast. Hopefully. If you're not too busy gallivanting with friends, Mr. Social Butterfly. But all right. Bobby. Check me out every week on the POS podcast and on the Patreon because I do twice as much work as Frank here. I will be at Broadway Comedy Club some Wednesdays coming up. So if you want to see me, let me know, and we can set that up. Um, I'll buy your tickets. I'm not going to have you pay to see me perform 10 minutes of comedy. That's not really fair. I'll be at Comedy Comedians of the Compound the next couple upcoming ones we have. And from there, if you want to see me, hit me up. You'll see me on Compound, well, all that good shit. Will you know your schedule like for your Broadway dates like in the veil? You get like every month your dates, or what happened there? Well, I got the dates, and then I left my – calendar on the airplane so i hit the guy up and haven't gotten back yet i know when the first one is and hopefully i can hear back before then and give some more you got some weekday ones they're all weekdays all right. mainly no, wednesday good. no because i'm thinking maybe maybe one time i'll pop up early check you out a compound and then come watch the show 
But, That'd be um, awesome. Maybe we could get you on some compound stuff too. I'm not worried about that, but of course I'll be on. I'm a fucking legend. Anyway, um, <laughs> you can uh, you can get come cupcakes anywhere. You can go to globalmagic.com. That's a good place to be. I um and home records. Oh, I didn't notice that. Did anyone else notice what Bobby added to this thing? <laughs> Magicians, mentalists, and home wreckers is now the new thing. And by the way, now you can have sex addicts or whatever the word sex jerks. Um Follow us on YouTube. We're growing all the time. We got some great shows. If you're not on the Patreon, you missed out on our latest Ray episode. Ray was awesome. He was insane again, and you're going to love it. I, we can't even do a show when he's on. He just makes us so mad, but he's so funny. He's fantastic. So make sure you go check out the latest Ray episode, which, by the way, he hates it. We call it that, but that's why it's great. Um, it's like if, da- Dan, if you like literally lost your mind and were 20 years younger, you'd be Ray. This guy that Bobby found somewhere. I think but I think Ray is the only one who could get away with the he thinks he's the Truman show for real. If you went your if you're where your hair goes down, Dan, it went up, you would look exactly like Ray. <laughs> okay. So like Wolverine kind of thing. Yes, very yeah. much so. Don Kingish. Hmm. Yes. But white man. But um, thank you guys so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. If you want to see those shows, get on the Patreon POS podcast, support Silk City Hot Sauce and Bobby. If you can't join them, beat them. Watch out for all the stick shakers and tinkerbells. And don't be a piece of shit. Come cupcake.